Hey everybody, um, put out a video last night and there were a few things I forgot uh, to mention about the drills. I'll put the link up in the video. Um, a few things about the draw that I wanted to add on to and discuss a little bit. I also have a few different things I'd like to talk about today. Not so much drills. Uh, talk a little bit more about the handgun itself. Uh, things to consider in customizing your own and um, yep, so the first thing we're going to want to talk about is uh, <clears throat> well first working with a Glock 22 not 22 caliber for anybody's new uh, to firearms just a 22 is the model fires 40 Smith & Wesson now when I was talking about last night were drills that you could do at home, um, which is drawing on a little post-it note and pulling your handgun out and drawing to it uh, so that when you get that full extension you're on target with that post-it note. <clears throat> There's something I wanted to talk about also um, in your drills with what you do is uh, when you draw and you get here, what a lot of people do what I notice a lot of people do is they'll kind of scoop it out like that you see how there's that little arc like that there or they'll kind of drain down like that um, what you see I'm exaggerating for video but that's exactly what happens okay you scoop and then you kind of have to find the target like that okay and once again I'm exaggerating but you do do that and uh, you're not able to get on target as quickly and it's the same with this, you kinda gotta go like that. Um, what I recommend and what I stressed in the video last night was <clears throat> in one of the drills, clear? Clear, okay. What I do is uh, I have it so that the the handgun, we're doing a dry fire drill and um, I have it to where you come out and you start acquiring your target here and you start coming online and slowly right at the end there at your full extension is when you pull the trigger okay so that's a drill you can do at home um, and also when you're on the draw and you get up here what a lot of people do is to control the recoil they'll pull down on it pull down like this and you can feel yourself do it too um, when you grab and really tight on the hand on the uh, excuse me you're grabbing really tight on the grip and you're kinda going like that you're gonna throw your shots off and that's an issue you're gonna be shooting low you're gonna miss your target um, <clears throat> one more thing is when you draw what helps me a lot is imagining that on top of the slide here you have a glass of water and when you pull that trigger you don't want to spill that water. Okay, so it's going to be smooth right at the top of that. I think I flinched a little bit on that one. Um, so yeah, there's that. Let's see. I got a video. <clears throat> I got a video coming out on uh, smoother grip and everything like that on Saturday. So be on the lookout for that. I'll be able to actually take video at the range and show you. Um, a little bit more live fire. It's usually a little bit more helpful than this kind of lecture. But um, there's a couple things that I've done with my gear that I wanted to show you. I got this in the mail yesterday. I have a lanyard. Now this took a couple um, a couple tests and I used to have the clip right here. And then with the clip right here, this all got tangled up in the holster when I tried to go back and holster it. It got all bunched up. So if you do go with the lanyard, stick it a little bit farther back, okay? So it doesn't get in the way. It's kind of hanging back there. I might have to move it back myself. But um, another thing, I know you're getting seasick, is what I have on mine is a hogue, a wrap around grip here, okay? Now it is a little bit textured, it's not as textured as the Packmire. Uh, Packmire I don't have 
I don't have it around here. I used to have Packmeyer on this one until I found the Hogue. And what I like about the Hogue for me is it over exaggerates between the finger grooves here, like this. And that just fits my hand better because I've got wider hands. Now, a lot of people, uh, I know a friend of mine, uh, the Glock 22, the grip fits him perfectly just with his hands. He doesn't need any kind of aftermarket grips. Uh, what I'm going to stress to you is it's all personal. If you're <clears throat> if you're at the range, okay, and you take a shot, and you have to kind of finagle your hands there, and kind of reposition like that after every shot, or after every two or three shots, something wrong with the grip. And I know with the uh, M&P series, they have adjustable back straps, you know, you can do all that, or you can get wrap arounds. Um, personally, I like Hogue. I like the Hogue that I have here. You might like Packmire. You might like uh, whatever else they have out there. Or you might like none. You might make your backstrap smaller. You might do any of these things. Um, but it's all personal. Okay. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to show you now is a few uh, bad grips. Uh, bad ways to, to hold the handgun. Um, I think what it's called teacupping is when you place your hand underneath it like this. Okay. If you could see that there. So you've got it, got it here like that. That's T cupping, and then there's the cross thumbs, like this. Glock owners, you know what I'm talking about. You'll get your, you'll get your hand cut up pretty good from this slide, especially if you're wrapping your thumb back around like this. The way to properly grip it, if you ask me, this is my personal opinion video. It's the beauty of the YouTube is to have a full high tan grip here as high as you possibly can to reduce that recoil keeping that barrel down and um, a good tight grip around here okay if there's any room if there's any looseness um, without this without this hog on here I had a little pocket of room right in here and there was kind of like an air pocket just straight up it wasn't that part of my hand wasn't touching anything if you see anything like that <clears throat> then that's a an issue you're gonna have to work on get a different grip uh, work around see what works for you and then your second hand you're gonna wrap the fingers around here you can if you'd like if you have a higher caliber weapon and the ability to do so wrap your thumb or your uh, uh, excuse me stuttering here wrap your index finger around that to try and control that recoil uh, I wouldn't recommend that because when you're here and if you have this wrapped around you tend to pull on it and that's gonna pull your shots off so my recommendation would be to come around here like this okay and with keeping this thumb straight and uh, attached basically to the side of the grip here and placing this one underneath it. A lot of people what I see do is they'll take this thumb and kind of come off of it like that and there's that big space right here, this triangle where there's nothing touching that gun. Okay, so you're going to want to keep this thumb touching and in line with that and the way I, <clears throat> my reference point is putting my thumb right here before the uh, accessory reel okay that's just what works for me that's my um, that's my reference point that's where I put it there that's where I put it every time so when you come out here like this that's kinda how it looks um, just about even with the index finger maybe a little bit more um, that's just a good grip any other grip is gonna have issues with recoil and um, getting that second shot on and of course, like I said, you're going to be um, repositioning. Excuse me, repositioning your hand after every two or three shots. Now, there's uh, one more thing I'm going to talk about is home defense. And there's uh, a couple different grips, a couple different ways of approaching things. I'll make a video about that in the near future. Um, <clears throat> it's called center axis reload. 
to talk to law, talk to law enforcement agencies. Um, you grab it. So you place your left hand or your reaction hand here, and both of your thumbs touch like this. And the way you line up is you like here, right here, and with enough practice, what they teach is double tap to the chest, and all you have to do is this, and it's shot to the head. So boom, boom, boom. And that's how they teach it from here. And then when you come up, what you do is you, you, uh, you line up like this. And you aim with your opposing eye. So for me, I'm, I'm right-handed. So I'd be aiming down the sights with my left eye. Okay. So you're like this. And then you could switch. Just as easy, but the same thing applies. Is you're holding with your left hand. You aim it down with your left eye. Okay, it's very compact. It's very, <clears throat> very tactical. Um, I'll discuss it when I do the house clearing um, episode. When it comes to that, now there's another thing with home security I want to address, and that's the difference in rounds that you can use. This is a Corbin Powerball. It's a uh, hollow point round with a little aluminum, uh, excuse me, nylon ball there in the middle. And this will stop in drywall so I don't have to worry about shooting through, hitting a propane tank, or shooting through, hitting the neighbor's house. This full metal jacket will absolutely do that. It will absolutely shoot through the walls, shoot through the next wall, and then hit the neighbor's car or hit the neighbor's house and then you have to worry about collateral damage and lawsuits and all those things on yourself so yeah it's expensive this is about 30 bucks a box of 20 but that's the mag that sits on the nightstand you know that's um a very personal <clears throat> not something you go out and plink with uh, another thing I own, a, I own a Glock obviously I don't have to worry about whether or not it'll cycle certain ammo. If you have, for example, match grade 1911s or other Smith & Wesson handguns I'm, I know have issues, um, make sure that before you make any big investments, make sure that your handgun will cycle the ammunition. Uh, this is just kind of a preview to a few of my my videos <clears throat> coming in the future and a few of them will be done this weekend. Uh, so do stay tuned, um, and just remember everything is all personal. You know this whole grip that I have on the on the Glock probably won't fit you. Um, having a lanyard probably won't fit. You know it might not fit for you. Doing all these certain things with the gear, and like I discussed um, in my last video, I used to have my handgun spare mags right here until I decided uh, until I decided until I was told to do low crawl in which case it started dragging down and the mags started coming out and it wasn't working for me so now what do I do I keep my mags down here right here on my waist there's the same reason I keep my handgun here on my waist and not in some of these tactical thigh rigs my arms are too short my hands are too wide that's just how it goes for me. My own things are my personal things. This is my gear. Probably won't work for you. You'll have to get out there and get into uncomfortable and uh, unpredictable environments before you can understand <clears throat> what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Oh, excuse me, I'm feeling a bit under the weather today. So I hope you bared with me. Um, I appreciate it. And uh, if there's any constructive criticism or ideas for things that y'all want to see uh, please do in the comment box or make me a video response or anything I'm gonna cut it here uh, have a good night